All right, welcome to the first video in this series of making RPG Maker games. Um, I realized that there was no uh, sort of tutorial that guides people from beginning to end on how to entirely make an RPG Maker game, at least none that I could find, so I decided to make one. And before we get into the actual tutorial, I just wanted to take this video to say that RPG Maker has a weird reputation over time, but it shouldn't be overlooked, and it is the best program for starting out in game dev. You don't have to worry about programming or art. I think every child should receive a copy of RPG Maker because it's just amazing. But um, here are the five types of games that you can make in RPG Maker. First is, of course, an RPG. Um, this includes battle systems, you know, uh, finding treasures, and, and all the things that a classic RPG, specifically a JRPG, would offer. You know, turn-based combat, all that stuff. Yeah, we know. That's what it's built for. But, moving on, you can also do a visual novel. Um, visual novel, it's basically just a story. But with pictures that's that's all it is that's the basic thing that you can put in there but the cool thing about doing this in rpg maker is unlike other softwares that are specifically for visual novels with this one you can add the bonus of walking around and exploring a bit so for example a regular visual novel you might have two characters talking and then it just goes to the next scene well in rpg maker you can have two characters talking and then it takes a break from the story and it lets you for example explore their room and like examine things, go through their drawers. You know, it adds a lot of uh, variety and interest to keep your players more engaged. Next is a 2D side-scroller. I haven't actually done this myself, but I do know that it is a thing, the most popular example being uh, Lisa. But essentially the way this is set up is it's still RPG Maker, it's just that you can't go up or down, you can only go left or right. Um, although some have it set up so you can like do light platforming and jump up, but for the most part, if you want a game where you just go from left to right, uh, you can do that too, no problem. Next is a story-rich game, and this is probably the bread and butter of RPG Maker, and probably what gained its fame, especially in the 2000s, you had a lot of story-rich games, which could be anything. They could be horror games, they could be like just story-driven games, they could be romance, whatever. Um, basically, it's RPGs without the combat. Everything else is there. You know, find the key to open the door, read the diary, find out about this character. Essentially, go from point A to point B and enjoy the story along the way. Tons and tons of stuff you can do there, and that's what I would recommend people start with. And the last one is prototypes. And what I mean by this, this is often overlooked as a tool, but let's say you're making a game in Unity or Unreal and it's going to have 3D graphics and it's going to have these crazy environments and it's a really big game that's hard to keep track of. Make it in RPG Maker first. Even if you're the only one who's going to see it, you will be able to fix a lot of problems before you ever get started with your final development, which is a lot more time consuming and you can iron out all of the issues in RPG Maker and have it ready to go as a prototype. And then as a bonus, you can just follow along with it as you make your final game. I did this in one of my games and it helped tremendously. Like, it makes a huge difference. Of course, it depends on what type of game you're making, but um, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Basically, you're always told in school uh, when I studied game design to do everything on paper first. And in this case, RPG Maker is a very, very fancy paper. And you can do more than this if you know JavaScript or coding or, you know, if you've got some good plugins. But for the base core where you don't need anything else, that's what you can do in RPG Maker. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to part two if you want to watch that after this video where we're going to actually get into the program and start doing stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts on these five ideas. And if there's any that I missed that you could also do in RPG Maker, please leave it down below. Thanks.